Oh, Kali Dokali. Let's get ourselves together here. Hello, 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 everybody. We're going to get going in a second. I am just uh, getting comfortable at the old craft table here. Welcome to a Sunday afternoon live stream. We're going to do a little tutorial today. And uh, I think, I think I'm ready. Mr. and Stitches, you can take us to the craft room table. Ooh, I've got so many juicy things here on the table today. I don't even know where to start. Um, hello everyone. Welcome to a Sunday afternoon. It's uh we're live in the craft room at the Jade and Stitches show. We have had a pile of questions about granny squares lately. Um, I don't know, you know, if that's a thing, if everybody's kind of like just putting their feet up and doing grannies right now. I will say that granny squares are my favorite go-to. Uh, little project. Um, so I thought, you know, uh, we should probably just do an ultimate granny square live stream <laughs> where we just talked about granny squares. We've done so many here on the show and we've got a ton of patterns in the Etsy shop. And, um, you know, you can just never exhaust the concept of a granny square because they are so useful that same little pattern can be done so many different ways. Like I've got the exact same granny square sitting here on the on the, the table in front of me in three or four different ways. So uh, we're going to talk gauge. We're going to talk yarn. We're going to talk rows. We're going to talk sizing, how to figure out how many you want, the whole thing. Uh, once this live stream is over, we'll have a really handy list of live links um, in the description box and probably the pinned comment just on our granny square tutorials, um, you know, information on gauge, how to figure out how big to make a blanket, et cetera, et cetera. We've got a whole pile of tools. We've been at this for 10 years now. <laughs> so we've got a lot of granny square information. Um, but today we're going to just do it live. We're going to talk grannies. We're going to make some. We're going to explain how you can get different looks with the same pattern. going to have a lot of fun because, my gosh, you can do so much with a granny square. And uh, they're my favorite thing. If I just want to turn my brain off, I will sit and make granny squares. And they're my favorite way to use up scraps. So um, I'll introduce you to the hooks, a pile of yarn, some of my favorite little projects, and uh, we'll get going here. And if you've got questions about granny squares, please feel free to leave them in the uh, the live chat or even down below in the comment section if you pop in here later today. Mr. In Stitches is in the well. I am here. He's here. I am in bed and water. <laughs> And uh, a big humongous welcome to all of you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to our subscribers. Welcome to everybody who's new. And uh, let's jump into it. Granny squares are the first thing that I teach people when I start teaching crochet. So if I'm sitting down with a friend or even if we're sitting down to start a, start our YouTube channel, one of the first things we did was the granny square. Anytime somebody wants to learn from me directly like friends, I always teach the granny square because it employs the double crochet stitch, which I feel is sort of the, the most popular and probably the easiest to see stitch and the easiest to count stitch. It teaches you how to go around corners. It teaches you how to sort of like, just do some basic crochet math. And um, it's so useful. Once you practice a granny square, you've got something useful to use. You can turn it into another project. You can make a few more. There's so many ways to use granny squares. So, uh, we're going to talk about all the fun things you can do with the granny square and hooks you might want to use, why you might want to switch up your hook size. You know, um, this, for example, is our double strand granny square. We did a live tutorial on this several years ago. This is probably one of my favorite little lap blankets of all time. It is absolutely gorgeous. And this is me grabbing any old couple of pairs of yarns that I have lying in the stash basket, knotting them together and then just making giant granny squares over and over again. And I, I just can't stop looking at this. I love this so much. Um, this is fun to do. It's fun, a fun way to use up scraps and no two blankets are going to look the same, but they're all going to be really beautiful. And the trick is just pairing a light and a dark yarn together. doesn't matter what the colors are as long as one's light and one's dark because it creates a contrast. And contrast is what makes this so darn pretty. These are, 
let's see here. Here's the center of a granny square. So that's row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, or put another way, find the corners of it, and you can just count the, the shells along the side. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. This is a five row granny square. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, that's a really big square. Let me grab my measuring tape. And I'll just quickly measure this for you. So that's a five row granny that's nine inches across. Well, it's using two strands of largely size four medium weight yarn. And I used a really big hook. So let's look to the hooks here. You can really play with the size of hooks you use. I like to use a size seven millimeter or larger hook, even just for a single strand granny when I'm making granny squares for a blanket in general. Um, but I would have used a much bigger one for this one, probably a nine millimeter or maybe even a 10 millimeter, like my purple hook here. This is a 10 millimeter, also known as an N. This actually says N or P on it because I think there's a bit of confusion as to what the actual letter sizing is for this, but this is 10 millimeters. So that's the actual measurement of the hook. And holding two strands together, nice loosey-goosey tension. You only make five rounds in a granny and you get a nine inch square. So this is a super fast way to whip up granny squares. You'll have enough to make a giant blanket in no time. And if you've got a lot of yarns left over from other projects and you don't know what to do with them, anything from a small scrap to a really long scrap, knot them together, turn them into magic balls, and then pair the lights and the darks together and you can get something as pretty as this. And I, I just love this blanket. I cannot stop looking at it. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that one up there for now. I got a couple of questions. Yeah, let's have it. Let's have a question. Okay, so um, the first one is from Tiffany's little sister. Tiffany's little sister. Um, what is your favorite stitch? And I'm gonna add to that. Okay. Um, my favorite stitch, I, I mean, I guess like if we're just talking about a, a, a basic granny, a, a basic crochet stitch as opposed to like a pattern, then I'd say the double crochet is the fastest and it's the, and it's the, it's the easiest for me. Um, I don't necessarily use it the most, but I do like it a lot. I find it the easiest and the fastest one to make, but I do like the granny, um, the double crochet in the granny square. We've made actually a granny square here on the show before that used the half double crochet, uh, which makes them very, very small. But um, I prefer to use the double crochet when I'm making granny squares because it just, it's not too big a stitch. It's not too small a stitch. It doesn't create too many gaps. Um, I don't know. That's probably the better one. One more question and then I will let you uh, get back to it. Mm -hmm. This is from Dawn, one of our channel members. Hey, Dawn. What kind of border would you recommend other than a, I lost it. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Mr. Stitches is looking for the rest of the question. The question disappeared on me. There we go. What kind of border would you recommend other than a single or double crochet on a granny square? Granny squares uh, are, uh, at their core, they're a multiple of three. So any kind of uh, border that works over a multiple of three can, in theory, be used on a granny square blanket. But it depends on the look you're going for. So, for example, this is single crochet. There is no real stitch um, number requirement. Uh, and you can use single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet. If you're just using a single stitch repeated, you can use any one you want to make your border. If you wanna make your border loose and lacy, then a tall stitch might be good. If you wanna make your, your border tight like this one, the single crochet is good. You can use the shell stitch again, if you want. You can just keep repeating that granny shell stitch, which is essentially the little three double crochet together, but that requires you to kind of keep skipping and using the spaces, but that's a nice easy way to make a border on a granny square blanket. You can use uh, a, a um, scallop stitch uh, because a scallop stitch is easy to make if you just want to use the spaces in between the shells. Um, there's a lot of different options. It depends on the kind of border you want. Do you want it to be cute and frilly? Do you want it to be plain and simple? Do you want it to be more like a frame? Do you want it to be wild and lacy? You could even put fringe on a granny square blanket. Um, it really does depend on the look you're going for. And, and there are a lot of options. So. Big thank you to Susie for 
for the super chat. Thank you, Susie, for the super chat. Appreciate that. Yes, Mr. and Stitches need the microphone. We cannot seem to get a microphone into the well just yet, but <laughs> we are working on it. <laughs> yes, you won't be able to hear Mr. and Stitches all that clearly, but it's okay. He's down there. He's he's all right. Um, I can hear him. That's the important thing. All right. I have two small kinds of granny squares in front of me. So I brought this one out because we've had it on the show before. This is a little um, kind of, I won't call it a wall hanging. I actually have it hanging over the um, the towel rack of a dry sink piece of furniture we have. And what I did was I created these little um, um, tabs, I guess, that then bend over top of the towel rack and button onto the little button that I have below. So the whole thing just sort of like hangs on the towel rack like this. And these are great tabs. If you want to make a pretty little curtain or um, a wall hanging like this, uh, or even to hang like a little towel out of your granny squares, these little tabs can be any size they can be any length. Basically, you just kind of keep going, keep sort of bending it over your towel rod or whatever it is you need to bend it over until you feel it's long enough. And then you just create like a little single, like a little tiny buttonhole, kind of like we did um, with the, the baby cardigan on Friday. Put a little button there, any button you want. And uh, ba boom, you've got a cute little way to hang your granny square wall hanging or curtain, whatever it is, you want to make as many tabs along the top as you feel it needs. So this isn't a very big or heavy little wall hanging. So I only made uh, five across the top. I evenly spaced them out and five seems to be just enough to hold up the weight of the little wall hanging. But if it was bigger, you might need more. You might want to use a strong yarn. It depends on the size. So you can really easily figure that out just by holding it up yourself. You know, if you feel like it's kind of heavy or if you're looking at it and you feel like the bottom of it is sort of or the top is kind of pulling a little bit because there's a lot of weight below it, then you want to add more of these tabs. And that's if you're going to hang it up. Um, I'm going to have a sip of water. Just a moment. Shout out to Nico for gifting a panel membership. Nico, thank you for gifting a membership. And congratulations to Brittany who got it. Welcome to the family. Um, this is a really simple and fun little kind of way to bring some color into your, your immediate surroundings. Uh, Vima and I were just talking about wall hangings um, a couple days ago. Um, she's been making some. I've been kind of playing with the idea. I Whenever you want to add a little bit of color to a wall, to the back of a door, um, granny squares are a great go-to. I've got nine of them here. All I did was pick three colors per granny square that I felt were kind of, I wanted a real rainbow thing. So I had shades, I had pinks and reds and yellows and oranges. And I just picked three that I liked and I made a three row granny square using these three colors, um, any of the three colors. I had a lot of scraps left over. So none of these took very much yarn at all. Um, this would have been around, two yards row two would have been around four yards and row three would have around six to eight yards depending on the tightness of your tension and the hook you're using so very little yarn per granny square per row i've got nine of them here they're all completely different i edged them all with single crochet so didn't have to worry about you know this special stitch counts or anything i just single crocheted all the way around then i sewed them all together because that gives me more control and then I did a row of single crochet again in the black all the way around. And I got this lovely stained glass window effect. When you take colors, any colors at all, and you mix them together into a granny square, just don't use black or don't use white. Then edge it either in black or white, especially black if you want that stained glass window effect and instant stained glass window. I mean, this is so simple, but it's so striking because that black only used in the framing gives it that that really pretty stained glass window effect then i just used almost every single color i'd used in the squares and i did a row of single crochet and another row of single crochet and another row of single crochet until i pretty much ran out of yarn edged the whole thing in black again 
added my tabs and that was it. I wasn't going for a size. I wasn't going for anything in particular. I just really started wanting to use up my scraps. That's how I made this. I didn't plan it. It just kind of evolved. And it's one of my favorite pieces because it is so cheerful and bright. Um, so that is a fun way to use up some scraps. This is a fun way to use up some granny squares and, um, you know, add a little splash of color to your wall. Wall hangings, covered. Super easy. Why not use some granny squares for that? And frankly, they can be any size. They can be little like this one. They can be really big. It's all, all in what you like, what you've got yarn for, what you feel like doing at the time. I made a pile of these. I thought I would try to recreate some of these today. I don't have these yarn colors, but I do get a lot of questions about how to make these specific squares. And these squares, one, two, three, four, are four rows each. There's basically three rows done in one color and then a row in the other color. And they all match because they're all bordered in the same color, even though the middles are completely different. Now that's the new channel member. Uh, Rosie Crochet Corner joined our membership. Welcome to the family, Rosie. Thanks for joining. I am going to have another sip of water. I'm just looking at all the, I've got a big pile of yarn just off to the side that you can't see and I'm kind of eyeballing. I'm trying to decide where to start here. Um, there's, I think I want to start by talking about different hook sizes and how it'll change. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get I'm going to get some size four medium weight yarn. This is actually size four medium weight yarn, believe it or not. I know they're very small, but it's because I used a small hook. So that's kind of part of my, my little explanation today. So I'm going to get my five and a half millimeter hook. This is your middle of the road hook size. This is what is typically chosen when you're dealing with a medium weight yarn. I'm going to get a smaller hook. So this is a 3.25 millimeter or a D. So uh, an I, a D. And I'm going to jump right to one of the biggest ones I have, my 10 millimeter, also known as an N. I think it's an N, not a P. It's an N. And I'm going to use the same size yarn to make a granny square with all three of these so you can see how different it looks. So let me reach into my big bucket of yarn over here. Hmm, Something simple. Uh, hmm. I'll use this. Okay. I've got some variegated yarn here. It's kind of a, some blues and greens. It's not super pretty. I don't, I bought a whole bunch of this because I think it was on sale an eon ago. And now I'm not super fond of this particular colorway. Not that there's really anything wrong with it. I've just, I've had it in the stash for so long. I'm kind of sick of looking at it. But if you turn it into a granny square or you mix it up with something else, it can be quite pretty. So Let's make some granny squares with three different sized hooks using the same size yarn. I'm going to start with the smallest hook I have right now. Um, this is a 3.25 millimeter, also known as a D. It will be about the smallest hook that I can use with this yarn without splitting the yarn. So you could always go smaller if you're capable of that, but I'm going to try my best to not split my yarn. So I feel like that's the smallest I can go. I'm going to chain five. I'm going to make a ring and I'm going to start with the chained ring. So there's my little chain ring. I'll get my other hooks out of the way for now. And I'm just going to make that first row. So I chain three to start. Chain three counts as a double crochet in the case of this pattern. Two more double crochet into that circle. And that's my first little shell made. Look how small that is. Very, very small little shell. I chain two. For my first corner. Three more double crochet into the ring. I'm taking the opportunity to work over top of that little short tail as I go. Oops, this is a small hook. Let's try that one again. There's my second shell, three double crochet, chain two. And then I do it twice more. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Hello, Roni. I've got half an eyeball on the chat here, everybody. I'm uh, going to do my best to look at what I'm doing and sort of see the chat today. So I, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> uh, 
I'm uh, really pleased that you could all hang out with us this afternoon. I know people have got stuff going on on a Sunday afternoon, but uh, it's still cold and snowy here. So eh, crochet is where I'm at. <laughs> I've got four shells that each shell consists of three double crochet. And I've got chain two for my corners. I chain my last two, join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And that is my first row. Whenever I finish a row in a granny square, especially when I'm just getting going, I try to find the corners and pull them out. Um, it's very small. If you use a smaller hook, you're going to get a smaller granny square. And you can sort of see the squareness starting. You can see the four little corners and you can see the center. And that's a very small little center with a 3.25 millimeter hook. And it is, what is this, three and a half centimeters across? Eh, almost four centimeters or stop moving you one and a half inches basically one and a half inches across okay um so i'm gonna put that am i gonna cut that hmm no you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do another row i have changed the way i do my granny squares over the years i used to slip stitch backwards into the the space next to me to start the new row i used to turn and start working um like turning every row but in recent years i've decided that i like always keeping the fronts of my stitches facing up in every row so i like to slip stitch across the two stitches that sit next to the chain three where I join the row and then slip stitch into the next corner space. And it's always a corner space when you use this method. So you slip stitch across into the next space. It's always a corner. And then you can start in a corner. Chain three, two more double crochet. That completes your first shell. And then you're, you're starting in a corner. You know that that's shell number one. Chain two to create the new corner. Before you leave, you work three more double crochet. And then I like to work a single chain between shells. This is optional. If you are working small and tight and you want a really tight granny square with very small spaces, you don't have to chain one between your shells. You only have to worry about creating chains for your corners. But I kind of like that extra chain. I feel like it just gives me enough space in between my shells that I can squeeze a shell in there on my next pass. So I always go for shell, chain two, shell, chain one for my corners. So there's shell, chain two, shell. I chain one. That'll set me up for a nice little space between this, this shell and the one next to it. And then because it's row two is just basically corner spaces, it's shell, chain two, shell, chain one in each of those corner spaces all the way around. So I'm going to do two rows with this hook. I'm going to fasten off and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the larger hook. And we're going to measure them. So same yarn, different hooks. I love granny squares too, Cherry. They're my go-to. They are my favorite way to scrap bust. They are my favorite little building block. I love designing granny squares. They're my favorite thing. They really are. I always end up coming back to granny squares. Chain one and slip stitch to join to the top of the chain three. That is my two row granny. I'm gonna snip my yarn. Fasten off. That was my smallest hook of my little selected set today. I'm going to pull out those corners. This is a tight little square because I've used the smaller hook with the size four medium weight yarn. So it makes for a nice tight little square. You almost can't really see those spaces. The little spaces in between my shells, they're nice and small. The shells are tight. It makes for a nice, tight little square. Did you see the super sticker from Renee? Renee, a super sticker. Thank you. Yes, I can. Thank you, Mr. Stitches. <laughs> All right. My two row granny square made with the D hook or the 3.25 millimeter hook is about two and a quarter inches across or 
five and a half centimeters. So that is the size of the two row granny with this hook. All right, same yarn, bigger hook. We're gonna to move to a five and a half millimeter. I'm gonna stick with the same yarn and I'm gonna whip up a two row granny with this hook. I have a, a good request here from Lena. Sure. Lena would like to know if you could do a um, tutorial on the granny square to make a vest or something like a vest. We have a granny square vest tutorial. I wonder if if you've seen it, Lena. Um, we've got We've got, um, it's the granny, I think it's actually called the granny square vest tutorial, granny square vest. It's all in, we did it all in white. Uh, we did it a few years ago, granny square vest. Well, you know what? We'll, if you can't find it, Lena, we'll link it down below after the live stream. It is really simple. It uses um, one large granny square and four smaller granny squares. And we explain in the tutorial how you can figure out how big to make the granny squares. A great project if you're just getting your feet wet in the crochet world and you like making granny squares, because uh, it does make a really cute little vest. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's called the granny square vest. I don't know. Is Cami in the house? You know what? I'll, I'll, since our internet is better, I am going to try to find it. Everyone needs to let me know if it's affecting the screen. Okay. So can you repeat what I yeah, said? Yes, so Mr. And Stitches, Mr. And Stitches just said that because we have slightly better internet these days, he's going to see if he can open up another window, find the video, grab the link and share it and he wants to know if his activity on the internet has any effect on this stream. So if you guys see any strange buffering or stuttering or anything, please let us know because once again, we're trying a little experiment and you are all our cute little guinea pigs. <laughs> What I'm doing right now is just whipping up a two row granny square using the precisely same, exact same pattern that I just did with the smaller hook so that I can measure this one against the first one I did and we can see how much a hook size differs um, for the size of your granny square. And also, you know, you can sort of see how one might be better for a particular project over another one. This is also a great gauge practice if you're getting comfortable with your own personal tension and how it feels when you use different hooks in your collection. Highly, highly recommend doing this. This is a turn your brain off kind of project. So there's my two row granny using the five and a half millimeter hook, also known as the I or a nine. All right, so that's the five and a half millimeter hook, much easier to pull out. This one is almost three inches. So a little over two and three quarter inches or uh, about seven and a half, eh, seven and a quarter centimeters. So just before I get the other one going, there is the first one I made and the second one I made. So 3.25 millimeter, 5.5 millimeter, same yarn. Look at the difference between the sizing of those two granny squares. And these are both the exact same pattern, two row granny squares. Um, that is already, I can't believe the size difference. That is, that is a whole shell difference between these two. Unreal. This one was also difficult to pull out the corners. This one was marginally easier, All right? Let's try the biggest hook. I think I just saw, I didn't see who asked it, but somebody just asked if we're gonna do the granny square game again. Absolutely we will. But as you can tell, we kind of need both Mr. and Stitches and me in the same room to do that. And we're still fiddling with how to do that. Uh, I can't. Most likely it'll be sometime this uh, late spring. We should, late spring uh, or summer, we should be kind of Yeah, we're aiming for late spring, early summer to be able to play the Granny Square game again. Uh, because we both need to be in the same room. So the app is available for anyone to play on their own if they want. Yes, Mr. and Stitches just reminded me the app. We have an app. Our Granny Square game is available in an app. We're, we made that app. We're hosting it. It's a free app. It's the Granny Square game. You can play it at any time. Um, and we'll make sure that's linked somehow to, um, I think it's jadaandstitches.com slash app. Is There's a new hashtag. Hashtag free Mr. and Stitches. <laughs> No stuttering. No stutter. 
doing? Uh, so I can, I can go grab uh, links. Great. So I posted, I posted the vest. Marvelous. Okay, yeah, that vest is a Granny Square project. It's an excellent beginner project if you're new to crochet and you're just mastering the Granny Square. Um, and when I say mastering a Granny Square, that means you made it square. <laughs> because uh, granny squares are something I've been making for 30 years now, and I'm still discovering fun new ways to make them and to fiddle with the stitches and the counts and the chains and the spaces and the yarn and stuff I use. So as long as you can make it square, you've mastered a granny square and you can start making granny square projects. And that vest is a fun one. I am gonna do a two row granny square now. So exactly the same thing as the other one using my 10 millimeter hook. This is a size and this is a big hook but I'm still using the same yarn and I'm still using the exact same pattern. And we will see how much different uh, this one is from the other two. It's a fun sort of little lesson in gauge and also goofing around with the granny square. This obviously is gonna make a much lacier looking granny square than the previous two. And we'll probably discuss a little bit about where the best like the best sort of projects to use these different squares in. Um, I'm sure, you know, your, use your imagination. You can, you can do so much with a granny square. So that is row one. There we go. And row two, here we go. You're just draw, joining us now. Welcome. Happy Sunday afternoon. We are all about granny squares this afternoon. Thought we would start with some gauge, some exploration, exploration of gauge, and um, just talk about some fun ways to use them. Such a fun way to use up scraps. We're going to get into some different textured yarn here. We're going to try some held together strands Nico. oh nico thank you nico look who won kim <laughs> kim won a membership <laughs> yeah kim we're not live <laughs> oh thanks so much for the support guys we really appreciate it it, uh, I'm sure if you watch other YouTubers, you'll know that things are a bit bonkers at YouTube right now. Views are down. Everything is down, 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 down. It's very depressing. The, uh, you know, views are down. Income is down. Everything's down across the board. It's hard to to want to keep going sometimes when you see when you see it just plummeting like that. But um, I'm glad you guys are all here. That makes us feel really good. Sign of the times. Yeah, it's a sign of the times. All right. There is my third granny square much easier to grab those corners and pull out this is a much looser feeling square Woohoo! you can really see those spaces in between all right that was my 10 millimeter so let's bring the other three the other put the three of them together and let's take a look here this it's like goldilocks and the three bears <laughs> so this is my smallest my medium, my largest. This was just sort of randomly grabbing hooks in my collection that I thought were uh, different sized enough that I could still work with the size four medium weight yarn, but that would definitely show gauge difference or gauge differential uh, between the hooks. So we've got my 3.25 millimeter hook. This is the smallest, my 5.5 millimeter hook, that's the medium, and my 10 millimeter hook. And we're just going to remeasure them just for reference. So the little one is two and a quarter inches across or five and a half centimeters. The medium one is two and three quarter inches across or about seven centimeters, just a little over seven centimeters. And the big one is four inches across or 10 centimeters. So, wow. Shout out to Joanna for gifting a membership. Hey, thank you for gifting a membership, Joanna. I really appreciate it. 
okay, that is a huge difference. <laughs> this is small and tight. This is somewhat more loose. And this one's really loose. This is four inches and it's soft and sort of like very flexible. This one is a little less flexible and, you know, it's got some spring to it. And this one is very tight and it's not very flexible at all, but the faces are the smallest. Exact same pattern, exact same stitch count, exact same yarn, three different hooks. Okay. When you use a large hook and a thinner yarn and you get this nice sort of lacy, easy to bend, flexible feeling, this is nice for scarves. This is nice for shawls. This is nice for anything that needs to kind of bend around the body, not be super thick and, and, and ultra warm, but be soft and comfortable. So this makes for nice scarves, shawls, um, even sweaters, if you just want something light and like a, like a cardigan. So that's an idea. I'm looking at the chat. Um, is that Nico? Oh, Lori. Lori, thank you for gifting a membership. <laughs> and Tori won it. Oh, this is great. Thank you so much, guys. And Kelly won the last one. And Kelly won the last one. Oh, thank you. Um, the, family the family's growing. I love it. <laughs> thank you, everyone. So big and loose, nice for, you know, cardigans and sweaters and shawls and stuff like that. Even, even nice big lacy blankets. So you can always make a blanket out of these things, but that's sort of going to transfer to the feel of the whole project. Medium size. This is a little stiffer. This is also good for sweaters. It's also good for scarves and shawls. Maybe not so much shawls, but scarves that need to be a little warmer, need to be a little more firm, maybe like a cowl, something that you want to be a little stiffer. This is also nice for hats, things that are, you know, you want it to be a little warmer, the spaces are smaller, and it's a little stiffer. So it's not going to be stretchy. It's not going to maybe like stretch out on you. So if you want something, if you wanted to make a hat, I wouldn't go with this one because this would probably stretch out on you too quickly. This one may be a better choice. So the medium size. This little guy, pretty stiff, very small little spaces. This is good for uh, hair accessories. Maybe even if you use a much thinner, thinner yarn, little bracelets, you might want to make slippers out of this. These could also be used for hats, um, but it won't be maybe as stretchy as you might want it to be. And if you're using a very soft acrylic or a soft yarn, these make good granny squares for baby blankets because the spaces are small, it's nice and warm, and it's, um, it's a fun way to make, uh, you can still make baby blankets modularly, but if you don't want big, big, lacy, loose, open stitches or things that like little fingers can catch there, you don't want little fingers getting stuck in the stitch, but spaces in between shells are okay. And uh, I mean, I had granny square blankets growing up, but these might make better granny square options for a baby blanket or a baby cardigan or something like that. So there you go. Those are three examples of how completely different the granny square can look using the exact same yarn and the exact same pattern, but varying up the square, or your, your hook size, I should say. Um, I'm going to have a sip of water and I'm going to ask Mr. Stitches if there's any questions so far. Um, nothing, no, not really. Everyone's just kind of chiming in on what they're working on um, and uh, sharing what they're working on. And the questions, I think we kind of got to most of them. Great. Um, so wait a sec. Someone, if my, someone asked about uh, what is the difference between single crochet and double crochet? So can you relate that to the granny square maybe? Uh, single, the difference between single crochet and double crochet? Well, they're two different stitches uh, depending on... So in American terminology, the single crochet is one yarn, uh, one yarn over the hook before you yarn over and pull back through two loops. So, so creating a single crochet gives you two loops on your hook before you yarn over and pull back and crochet, basically. A double crochet is double that. So you'd have three loops on your hook, you yarn over, pull back through two, yarn over and pull back through two. So generally, if you want to think about the basic crochet, crochet stitches, you're yarn overing and you're pulling back through two loops. Now, you can play with that. You can create baubles. You can create half double crochets, half triple crochets. But the difference between the single and the double is, is just the number of wraps before you create the, the stitch. In uh, UK terminology, the single crochet is the slip stitch and the double crochet is the single crochet in American terminology. 
if you are the type that likes to collect old crochet books and magazines, and some of them are UK and some of them are US terminology, we have a stitch, a basic crochet stitch term definition uh, chart over on the tools page of our website, jadainstitches.com slash tools. And um, you can just sort of scroll down the page there and there's a, 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 a an explanation like a, a UK to US terminology chart. So if you're used to US terminology, you can do UK patterns and vice versa. I'm in Canada. I have an equal number of publications in US terminology and UK terminology because we kind of have, you know, equal amounts of, of uh, crochet influence, I guess, in this country. Um, and of course, my great grandmothers were um, British. So they had at most of their terminology was British and the stuff that they were reading when I was a very little girl was uh, English publications. So um, I'm used to both terminologies, but I prefer to act in US terminology because that tended to be when I was in my 20s and there were publications coming out that were available here, they were typically US publications and they used US terminology. And that as an adult is the terminology I got to be the most familiar with. So that's the one I use now. Um, so it depends on the terminology you're using that will, change the difference between a single crochet and a double crochet, uh, but typically it's just the number of loops that you're dealing with. I hope that helped answer it. Uh, what is the difference between wet blocking or steam blocking a granny square? Oh, th that's a good question. The difference between wet blocking or steam blocking a granny square. So both of them are a good way to block a granny square. Um, wet blocking basically means that you either soak or wash your granny square or whatever it is you're blocking or completely spritz it with water directly and then straight like so you sort of pull it out pin it into place and let it dry in the shape that you want it to dry in steam blocking is essentially using a steamer iron or a steamer uh, like just if you've got just a like a pants steamer or one of those steamer tools and you kind of pin it into place and steam or just pat it down, give it a little steam, pull it into place, give it a little more steam, pull it into place, tap it down, and you kind of block it as you heat and steam it at the same time. So different fibers react to steam blocking differently. I've I've steam blocked all the fibers, I think, in the past um, when I do block something. And, you know, the trick is just don't hold it too close to your work, definitely do not touch your work with it. You just want the steam to kind of get into the fibers, loosen them up, soften them up, and then that gives you the ability to kind of pull your piece into the shape you want it. But you still need to leave it to dry. And I recommend letting things dry for at least 24 hours, more if you're in a humid environment, just so it has had a chance to completely dry before you wrap it up or wear it or give it away or fold it up and put it into your closet. Uh, because you don't want anything, you don't want it to get musty. We have a new channel member. Welcome to Terry. Welcome to Terry. Welcome to the family. Thanks for joining. Okay, that is a little gauge experience, uh, experiment with uh, the granny square. Now I think we're going to do some uh, different textured yarn. So this this is kind of a neat way to play with yarn that you might have left over. I'm going to grab some out of my bin here. Oh, let me see here. New sticker, new sticker, new sticker. Oh, thank you, Joyce. <laughs> it's cute. That is cute. That's how I felt this week. <laughs> March, the end of March is always such a slog for me. I don't know if you guys are the same, but oh, golly. All right, I'm going to grab some different yarns here. Okay. Let's move our stuff out of the way. Get some space going. All right. I'm going to use, you know what? I'm going to switch hooks up completely. This is a request from one of our longtime channel members, Tori. Hey, Tori. Uh, off topic, mm -hmm. Tori would like to know if Jada could do more doilies, Tori. Doilies. So my question to Tori is, um, what type of doilies, like the super fancy lacy ones or the ones like the coasters that we've got in the past? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Tori, what kind of doilies are you thinking about? Are you thinking of like the kind that 
um, are like coaster sized? Are you thinking of the type that sort of sit on a side table? Like, you know, what kind of doilies are you considering? Because, yeah, like, uh, I mean, you can you can play with doily patterns in a lot of different ways. I don't typically make a lot of doily stuff because it's usually uh, crochet thread weight and a smaller hook. And um, with my rheumatoid, I have trouble working away at those um, as like I can't work, I can't crochet as long as I can with like a larger hook and a larger um, weight of yarn. So making a doily takes me a lot longer because I have to stop more frequently because it's just it's just working so small. I love the way they look, um, but they they take a lot longer for me to do. <laughs> But I am curious what kind of doilies you kind of have in your mind. Uh, we do have. We have some, but they're not, they're coasters and they're small, like they're not the, the super thin yarn type. Because yeah. we do have some tutorials. Yeah, we do have some tutorials that also would look good as doilies. Like we've got some placemat tutorials that you could size down two doilies using crochet thread and an appropriately sized hook to go with it. Um, and that would, you know, take something from say a, a place, a, a, like a placemat dinner plate sized thing all the way down to like a smaller doily. If you wanted to experiment with that, um, cause that, that works. I, you can have a lot of, again, with gauge, <laughs> change your hook size, change your yarn weight and uh, you can, and, but keep the pattern the same and you can really get a different looking thing. Uh, that's fun. If you ever, if you ever want to experiment with a really big hook and really thick yarn, or with a really fine weight th crochet thread and a small hook, then just take a pattern you're familiar with, i.e., a granny square, and play with that hook and yarn. So, for example, I've got a an eight millimeter hook here, and I'm actually considering. I might just stick with the big one. I don't know. Again, this is fun to, to kind of fiddle with. This is a pretty big yarn. You know what? I think I have an even bigger one. This is even thicker. I'm going to start with this. And then I'm going to switch to this crazy stuff. And I'm going to show you how much fun you can have with different textures. Shout but... out to a new channel member. Welcome, Lori. Welcome, Lori. New channel member. Thanks for joining. Okay. This is a size 6 bulky weight yarn. It's pretty thick. And I'm going to stick with my 10 millimeter hook because eh, it's nice and big and comfortable. But just for reference, I've already made a granny square using the size four medium weight yarn. So I think this might be a good, a good experiment yet again. Use the same hook, but now change the yarn weight. So I'm going to make the same granny square. Start with a five chain ring. And then three chains to start, two double crochet, that completes my first shell. And already this feels quite large. So this is a bulky weight yarn with an equally large hook, and I think it's going to be even larger than my size four weight yarn was. Nico's, uh, Nico's throwing out membership like candy. Hey, thank you, Nico. And the winner is Tiffany. Tiffany, congratulations on winning. Thank you, guys. Holy smokes. Okay, guys, this is row one of the same granny square pattern, but using a bulky weight yarn. This is so fun. And my big hook. Look at the size of this thing already. So that's one row. One row. Where's my measuring tape? Three inches across already. Seven and a half centimeters. Now imagine a five row standard granny square using bulky weight yarn, so super bulky weight yarn, and a 10 millimeter hook. That's going to be a massive square. Massive. I'm going to continue to make it a two row granny, but then I'm going to have some fun with this textured stuff. So I've slip stitched across to the next corner space. I'm going to Put on row two. Uh, so Tori responded. Tori says, any 
of them. I just have a hard time reading patterns and learning how to do them. I have played with your tutorials, just didn't know if I had any others you really of the really lacy kind. Ah, okay. So I get it. Yeah, you know what? Um doilies are so darn pretty. Um, but they're not they're not they don't have to be as complicated as we think they do. So for example, I would like to challenge you, Tori, and anybody else who's up for the uh, the challenge today. If you've got crochet thread in your collection and a crochet hook that's let's say a two millimeter, maybe a two and a half millimeter, um, I think that's like a, a B or a C hook, make a granny square using crochet thread and that small hook and see if you don't feel if it has a lacy, almost doily like look. Then once you're finished with that granny square, just put a funny border on it, like a, a scallop stitch or um, anything and anything you want. Just just play with that granny. Just make two or three rows of a regular granny square, but using that crochet thread and the hook. You know what, guys, if I can muster the uh, the energy in my fingers today, I'll even do it for you. I'll find I've got some crochet thread lying around here. I'll make a granny what? square using that, too. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ugh, granny squares are the best, the best, the best, the best. Two rows, big thick yarn, big hook. What have I got here? Almost five inches across. That's four and three quarter inches or 12 centimeters. So that's a lovely large granny square. Let's have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to snip my yarn, I'm going to fasten off, I'm going to just weave it in and out through the next two stitches to get to the corner, and then I'll just work over top of it in the corner. That's a little hack I use sometimes, especially when I'm in a hurry and I just want to loosely weave in my ends as I go. Look at this giant mess. This is some eyelash yarn. We did a live stream a little while ago on things to do with this annoying novelty yarn. Um, this stuff is it's it's lovely and soft but it's it's bonkers i mean <laughs> i i bought it i never actually used it for anything in particular so i'm going to do a row of uh shell stitch around this granny square with it with the same hook and we're going to see what it looks like so i'm going to start in the corner Whenever I change colors or I join a new yarn, I love to start in a corner, just like I like to start all my, my rows in a corner. And I just join with a slip stitch. So nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Let's make sure I got the right yarn here. Hashtag free Mr. and Stitches is trending. <laughs> Hashtag free Mr. and Stitches. I love it. Uh, once you've joined your yarn with a slip stitch in the corner, you just chain three like you were starting a normal row and continue from there. So did I, I managed to get all that tangled up in that. You know what? Let me do that again. There we go. There's my stitch. I don't want to, I want to work over top of my yarn tails. I don't want to actually accidentally pull them up into the chains. Oh, see, working with this stuff is such a trial. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, and here we go. I have to change how I, how fast I crochet until I get used to the feel of this eyelash yarn because it's so thin compared to the big thick stuff I was just using. But because it's fluffy and weird, it almost operates like a bulky weight yarn in terms of how much it sizes up. So. I don't really have to see what I'm doing. It is easy to find that chain two corner. I can stick my finger in there. I can see the two shells that I started with. Chain one, jump across to the next stitch, or I should say the next space. And if it's a single chain space, it gets a single shell. So three double crochet. 
And if you're new to Granny Squares, we have multiple Granny Square tutorials. We've got our beginner Granny Square tutorial. And then if you're comfortable with that, we've got a, a, a solid color Granny Square tutorial we did a couple years later that uses the, the actual pattern I'm using now. Because I've, I've evolved my Granny Square stitching in the past. So this... This feels so funny. That's fun. Yeah, this is fun. Oh, shout out to Ida for gifting a membership. Thank you, Ida. Thank you for gifting a membership. And look who won. Anna! Anna Victoria won. Yay! <laughs> Oh, this is fun. Thank you, guys. I kind of have to look at what I'm doing here with this wildly bizarre novelty yarn. Just so I don't accidentally. There we go. So, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, this is funny. Oh, my gosh. You can actually see the stitches. Because I'm using such a big hook with it, you can actually see the individual stitches. Um, I don't know if that comes through as well on the camera as I can see it here, but you can actually see like the three double crochet and the, the chain one spaces in between. There's all kinds of love in the chat today. Uh, best community on the internet, period. so many granny squares and granny triangles and granny hex um, um, rectangles they're all on our channel yes um to anybody who'd like to see an actual tutorial i've lost count at how many granny square tutorials we have and we probably have another double of those uh, in pattern form in the etsy shop by the way our four basic granny square patterns are on sale today in our Etsy shop. So if you wanted to pop over and take a look or you want them for your, your um, files, um, they're on sale today. And uh, they're also the featured, the four featured patterns. So if you pop into our Etsy shop, they should be right up top on the front page. Um, we have the beginner granny square tutorial. We have the solid color granny square tutorial. We have the solid double crochet granny square tutorial. And we have the mitered granny square tutorial. Those are the four that I would consider the most basic to start with. And then we just go nuts. We've got we've got heart at the center granny squares. We've got um, animal centered granny squares. We've got um, <clears throat> we've got granny stars. We've got granny triangles, granny hexagons, hexagon cluster. I, you name it, we've, oh, I, I, I mean, my gosh, how many have we, have we really got? I don't know. Uh, in 10 years, we probably do, we do granny square tutorials, like several of them every year. And we've been at this for like a decade. So <laughs> we, we're yeah, we're in our 11th year now. Um, where's Elle? She usually keeps track of this stuff for us. <laughs> Elle's not here today. Elle's busy, I guess. Elle's busy, Elle's busy with her bunny. She's feeding her bunny rabbit. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish this last third row of the granny square using this wildly bizarre eyelash yarn. And to be perfectly fair, it's like how, you know, what would be the point of this? Well, if you wanted to create a shawl or a scarf or something using big granny squares and you wanted to do just a, a border, but you didn't really know what to do, you could use that novelty yarn and put the border on using the novelty yarn. And look, look how, like, <laughs> I've got a fluffy granny square. <laughs> that is really big. That extra little bit of fluff really just sizes it up. What have I got, about six inches? Yep, I've got a six inch <laughs> granny square. Joanna wants to know if you got another giant lint bunny. Oh, a giant lint bunny. Joanna, that was so good. No, oh, no. And we do not have a giant lint bunny this year. In fact, I think the only Easter candy I have in the house, I hid it because I know Mr. and Stitches will go looking what? for it. I bought some of those super mini 
eggs. You know, like there's mini eggs and then there's like mini, mini eggs. I have a package of the mini, mini eggs because I was going to make um, cookies with the mini eggs in them. And I'm still planning on doing that. I had to hide them though. So Mr. and Stitches wouldn't find them and eat them. <laughs> The secret's out. Eh? The secret's out. Um, I just saw a question there. Keegan, have you ever done a diamond blanket? No, but we do have a corner to corner granny square tutorial that basically puts the granny square on its end and makes it a diamond shape because the shells all go left to right, but in a diamond shape. Um, that's also a good granny square tutorial that we have. Thanks for reminding me. It's the corner to corner granny square tutorial and it does make a diamond. And so you can put together a blanket using that square, but on its corner and have like a diamond. I, I There are other ways to make granny diamonds, um, but so far that one's my favorite. And don't encourage him, Cammie. <laughs> I see you there. Okay, so I'm going to snip that. I'm going to fasten off and I'm going to call that. That's a six inch granny square. Sure, what am I looking for? Oh, no, you don't. You're not leaving the well for chocolate. No, sir. I have that stuff hidden. You're not going to find it's it. the only reason I would want to leave the well. Kathy asked, question, making scrappy granny blankets with different WPI yarns, wraps per inch yarns. Uh, what hook size might be best for these number four scrappy blankets? Um, well, like we said, I don't know when you tuned in yet, Kathy, but at the beginning we were talking about um, weight and gauge. So it depends on the look you're going for. Look how different these are. Holy smokes. Look at these four crazy granny squares. Um, this is four weight yarn. And I use three completely different sized hooks and look at the different sizes. They're all exactly the same pattern, two rows each, completely different sizes. It depends on what you want. Do you want loose and floppy? Do you want um, stiff and small and tight stitching? Um, grab your favorite hooks, grab the yarn you want to turn into granny squares, whip up a quick sampler. You don't have to cut your yarn. You don't have to keep the sampler if you don't want to. Just whip up a couple of rows like this one, measure it feel it, pull out the corners, see if you like the shape, see if you like the the, the looseness or the tightness of the stitch. Um, because all four weight category yarns are not the same. In fact, that goes for any weight category. All the yarns that wind up in a weight category are not necessarily going to act the same way as other yarns in the same weight category. Um, so I highly recommend doing a little gauge sampler, you know, if you have a hook that you like using more than others, try it out. Um, frequently, I use a seven millimeter hook when I'm using size four weight yarn, size five weight yarn, and I'm making granny squares because I just like the square shape, feel, size that that hook makes with my tension. So a lot of this comes down to your hook, your yarn, your tension. Always work a few samplers. Um, that's a bulk, super bulky weight yarn. Now there's three rows there. I added a row of that novelty stuff, but <clears throat> excuse me. That's so big, that yarn. But also like the, the main part is just two rows. Uh, and these were both made using the same size hook. Crazy. I like your little steps there. Yeah. It's really fun to see the, um, to see how different it can be like it's just it's crazy songbird jade have you ever made a queen size blanket and do you have a tutorial on it um <clears throat> i've made king size queen size i've made every kind of blanket um and if you're going to make them out of granny squares you just need to know how big you want your blanket to be and how big you want your individual squares to be we did a video years ago on how many, how big to make your granny squares, depending on the size of the blanket you want to make. And you can figure out how many squares you need based on measurements. So let's just do a quick little summary of that, because that is a good question. <clears throat> thank you. Who was that by? Nico. Thank you, Nico. And the winner is... Who's the winner? 
Who? Maeve! Oh, Maeve won! Wonderful! Yeah. Ta-da! Okay. Let's say you want to make a blanket. How big is a typical queen size blanket? What are we talking like? Five, six feet across by six or seven feet. It just depends on, do you want overlay? Like, do you want it to slope over the sides of the bed? Do you just want it to be a coverlet that sits up on top? This is all up to you. Um, but let's say you want a blanket. I'm going to grab my little book here and a marker. Let's grab a piece of paper. <clears throat> Pardon me, everybody. I'm clearing my throat a lot today. It's just one of those days where I feel like I need to clear my throat a lot. <clears throat> okay. Let's say you want to make your blanket hmm, 60 inches across. So we'll say that's 60 inches wide by 72 inches long. So Basically something that looks like this. We'll say it's 60 wide by 72 long. Okay. You know how wide you want it. You know how long you want it. What's next? Granny squares. Okay. Presumably you've chosen a yarn or a colorway or a yarn weight that you like. And the thing you need to do is create a granny square. So the next thing you do is make a granny square. You can use any yarn you want. You can use any hook you want. You want to do that thing that we just did where you work up some samplers and decide which one you like. I like the feel of this one. I like the feel of this one. Eh, this one's too tight, so eh, it's going to be between these two. You know what? I'll go with this one. All right. So let's say you like the weight of or the, you like the feel of the granny square you made with the five and a half millimeter hook. OK, next thing you want to decide is how big to make your granny square. Let's say you make a granny square that winds up being six inches across. All right, so this is perfect. I like the way the square looks. I don't want it any larger. I don't want it any smaller. You make the granny square, you measure it, you go, okay, six inches. All right. Next thing you want to do is figure out how many of those granny squares you need across and down. Well, six inches divides into 60 inches 10 times. So you're going to need 10 granny squares across and six inches divides into 72. What is that? 12 times? Uh, let's see. That's one, two, two. Yeah, 12 times. So you're going to need 12 granny squares going down. Then you take those two numbers, 10 across times 12 down, and that gives you 120 squares. So you know that you will need 120 of the exact square you just made in order to get 60 inches wide by 72 inches down. And that's how you figure out how many squares you need in a blanket. You start with how big you want the blanket to be. Then you design your granny square, however many rows you want, using the yarn and the hook you want. Then you figure out, you measure that hook, you measure that square, divide that amount into the width, into the length, take those two numbers, multiply them together, that's how many squares you need. So if you were going to make a 60 by 72 inch blanket using six inch grannies, you'd need 120 of them. If you were going to make a 60 by 72 inch blanket using 12 inch grannies, you'd need 60 of them and so on and so on. So you want to do a little bit of math. I know some people run for the hills when they hear the word math, but math is our friend, <laughs> especially if you're into making your own things. Okay. Um, I hope that was helpful. I love doing a little bit of crochet math. It's uh, it's empowering. This basically, this basic formula helps you design your own blanket so that you will leave less to be figured out as you go. So if you start with, you know, knowing, oh yeah, I need 120 of these six inch granny squares. You can also then figure out one more step, how much yarn you're going to need. That's another big question people ask. Oh my gosh, how much yarn am I going to need? Well, if you want to be super crazy exact, you make that first granny square, you measure it, you do all of this math to figure out how many of them you need, then you take the whole thing apart and you measure how much yarn was in it. And that will tell you more or less to the centimeter how much yarn per granny square you need. Then you take how many granny squares you need, 
multiply it by the measurement of the yarn in that granny square. So let's say this was mm, eight meters or eight yards. Go with yards. Say it was eight yards. Eight yards equals one granny square. <clears throat> you need 120 of them. So 120 granny squares times eight yards. Let's see here. How good's my math? That's uh, 0, 16, 8 plus 1 is 17, 1,760 1, yards of yarn. Okay. How many skeins does that work out to? Well, that's easy enough. You just, well, this is the skein that I'm going to use. I find how much yarn is in it. Uh, let's see. There's 364 yards of yarn in the typical skein I'm going to use. You take that number and divide it into your total yarn requirement. And 364 looks like it probably divides, what, four times, four or five times roughly? 36 into 17, meh, five, six, let's say six. Always get an extra ball just to be on the safe side. So you probably need roughly six of these to make this many granny squares. Always get an extra ball, <laughs> always, always, always. So I would buy seven. I would buy seven skeins of that yarn based on the yardage I figured out that I needed from my granny square when I made it, took my measurements and took it apart. And that is how you can be as exacting as you possibly can. It's important if you're making a blanket and you don't want to buy too much and you don't want to buy too little. Um, it's also helpful if you're like on a bit of a deadline and you don't want to be like having to stop halfway through and buy more yarn. So very useful math to have. And it's not that difficult, you know, keep yourself a, a little calculator nearby. I think most of us have a phone and most of our phones have a calculator on it these days. So that's a handy little thing. Very useful formula. If you need to write it down and keep it inside your project journal so that if you have to refer to it down the road, you've got that math. And like I said, we've got a whole video on how to do that. And we'll link that below once we're done with today's live stream. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know what? I think I'm going to do that little crochet thread version of the granny square because now I'm just curious about it. So let's do that. If you'll excuse me, guys, I've got to go dump into the closet and pull out some crochet thread. I'll be right back. Oh, that would be me. Oh, is that visible? Is that visible, guys? Is that too, like... Is that too much the same color? Hang on. It's pretty good from here. You're going to have to work with it a bit to see if it's... Yeah, it definitely stands out. I've got white. I can use that. I think the darker one might be a little more visible. You think the darker one's a little more visible? Let's have a quick... Uh, a quick uh, you want to do a pull? Quick pull. Yeah, quick pull, everybody. Uh, while I'm picking out a, a hook. I'm making a granny square using crochet thread. So to be to be fully transparent, this is a this is a three weight. I think this is a that's a one weight. So these are two slightly different weighted yarns or threads, but you know, they're gonna do roughly the same thing. So uh, what are we gonna call it? Uh, beige, white and beige. White and beige, yeah. So which one am I gonna use here, guys? Beige or white? Mr. and Stitch is gonna put a quick poll up and you guys can vote while I'm choosing hooks. <clears throat> Let's see, I've got this little guy. I've got this one. I think this one might be too big. What else have I got? I think I might go with that one. Yeah, I might go with that. Let's see if I got a smaller one. All right, the poll is up. I also have all of these guys. These are my ice picks, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Let everyone know they have to partake in the poll because... Their, uh, their chat uh, request will not be acknowledged. Oh, <laughs> Mr. And Stitches wants me to remind everybody to take part in the poll. If you're in the live chat, the poll should be up at the top um, of the live chat. It should be in blue, I think.
Okay, so um, I've got a three weight, I've got a one weight, depending on the color you guys pick will help me to choose which hook I'm going to use. Um, the largest one I've got here is the D hook. That's the same one I made this little granny square with the size four weight yarn out of. And then I've got a C and a B. The B is 2.25 millimeter. The C is 2.75 millimeter. And then I've got my ice pick collection here, the super small steel hook sizes. Some of these are so darn tiny that you almost can't even see the hook. Like what's the smallest one I've got here? 0.6, that might be it. 0.75, 1.5. Oh, these are so pretty. 1.5, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's this one. It's this one. Let's see if you guys can even yeah, see this. We have, we have a lot of boats, but um, the, so far, Gage is winning. However, some people are saying that white shows up better. Um, but in my opinion, the base shows up better. So... I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. Well, we'll let the poll decide and I'll just use that one, whatever it is. All right. So we'll let the poll decide. So um, cast your vote. We have 118 votes already. Wonderful. All right. So um, we'll keep it up for a while. Um, gosh, that's small. Can anybody see the hook on the end of this thing? Just barely. But I think it's visible enough. It's a little blurry. Yeah, that is so tiny. I'm not even sure. Like, I don't even think. I think it actually, when you hold it, when you hold it down there, it's more visible. I'm gonna hold it over my thumb. When you when you hold it closer to the yarn, it's more visible. That's yeah, it's clear there. Yeah. <laughs> Most people can't see. It is so tiny, guys. I'm holding it and I can barely see it. Yeah, it's tiny. This thing is a this is a weapon. This is an ice pick. Good lord. Anyway, yeah, these are all very, 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 very tiny little hooks. I barely ever use any of them because, um, I mean, like I think that one would be even too small for this thread. I think you're you're literally crocheting with sewing thread at this point. <laughs> um, this is no, I don't want that one. Okay, I'm gonna use. I'm probably gonna use this guy my 2.25 millimeter do i have a two millimeter here let me see oh 1.75 that's about as close okay so it could be this one that one's not bad i might use this one we'll see okay all right you can close the poll mr and stitches you want me to close the poll mm -hmm. here we go there's 130 votes wonderful thanks for voting everybody and what are we at Beige, 55%, white, 44%. Okay, so it looks like beige one. That's fine. Um, you can, depending on the, I saw that Tori said that the white one's closer to the yarn she's going to be using, but that's fine. You can, you're going to get the similar effect. You're going to play with hook size. Um, I like using the size three weight yarn or thread, I should say. That's like my favorite yarn weight, but this is fun. This is the sort of stuff that you make those really fancy uh, placemats and, and um, tablecloths and stuff out of. So for the purpose of the demonstration, let's go with this yarn. If you guys have trouble seeing it, I will switch to the other one. But the pole, the pole speaks. So we're going to go with this one. Everyone's concerned for your delicate little hands because of those, those uh, weapons. That you have. Yeah, they're crazy. All right. Where's the end of this? Here we go. Okie dokie. Don't want to tie this into a knot. <laughs> ah, not untangling. All right. Stand by, everybody. There we go. Okay. Off to the races. I am going to use, oh, do I go with this one or do I go with this one? You know what? I'm going to go with the slightly larger hook. 
for starters. This is a B, a 2.25 millimeter. This is a size one crochet thread. It's this basically the, the favorite size thread to use for tablecloths and whatnot. I'm gonna make a granny square. So I'm gonna start the same way, make a slip knot. You can really vary the hook size you use with this thread, of course, just like anything else. Um, but I do like using a slight, I, I like using a hook that's just large enough that I can see what I'm doing, but also not to make anything that's too lacy. So there's my chain ring. And here we go. I chain three, counts as a double crochet. I work two double crochet into the ring. And then I continue, chain two, work a shell. This is much smaller, so I know you won't be able to see it as well, but don't worry, once I get it made, I'll kind of hold it so you can sort of see what I'm doing. Another shout out to Nico. Nico, thank you. Cheryl is the winner today. Zoom in a little bit. Well, hang on one second, honey. I'm just gonna just finishing this first row and then I'm gonna hold it up so okay. people can sort of see it. Um, this is very small, so normally, yeah, look at that. Oh, let me get that little tail out of the way. Uh, here's a, a good question from Kagan mm -hmm. How can you fix a blanket when one of the sides is going at an angle? Um, if you're working back and forth in a blanket, so question from Kagan, how do you fix a blanket if the sides are kind of like, I guess one's going in an angle. If you're working back and forth, so you're not working in the square, like a granny square, but you're working back and forth and one side is angling out on you, one of two things is happening. You are messing up your stitch counts. Um, typically when you work back and forth in a blanket, every row should be the same number of stitches or the same number of motifs as the last row. So count your stitches. If you find you're gaining stitches or losing stitches, that's your problem. If your stitch count is accurate, then it's very likely that your tension is changing. So you could be, you know, putting your hook in the wrong place or your tension is just getting looser and looser and looser and that's why it's angling out or you're getting tighter and tighter and tighter and that's why it's angling in. It's usually one of those two things. Um, so check that first, but check your stitch count first because that's usually the problem. Can you all see that cute little thing? Very adorable. That is a tiny row one from a granny square, but doesn't that look pretty? I feel like that looks so pretty. It already looks like a bit of a doily. So I'm going to do row two. I'm going to slip stitch across to that chain two space. This is why I say granny squares are the best. Here we are experimenting with hook sizes and yarn weights. We're already into the crochet thread. Everyone's loving the baby granny square. Well, I'm loving the baby granny square. We're going to turn this into a little mini doily just for Tori today. Mr. and Stitches, can yes. you please go get me yes, my boss. can you can you go get me my phone cord, please, so I can plug in my phone? The second live stream in a row, I've forgotten to go and get it. <laughs> it's going to become a routine. I guess so. I find granny squares very healing. The gentle repetition of going around and around and around and the the square slowly getting bigger with every round i just find that so relaxing thank you mr and stitches you made me leave the well for this i made you leave the well i thought i was getting chocolate <laughs> there you go thank you if you're if you're good later i might get you some Woo
Okay. Where was I? Almost done. Okay, so that's row two. Shell, chain two, shell, chain one, and join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Got my little tail hanging out in the back there. Pull up on that loop. And I'm going to grab those. Oh my gosh, they're so small. I'm going to just pull them out with the actual crochet hook. There we go. There is our little granny square. That's the two rows of the granny square made using a size one crochet thread. Honestly, not that difficult. And a 2.25 millimeter hook, also known as a B. Um, I'm going to measure it. Let's see how much this is. Oh my gosh. So delicate. So cute. Uh, I would just like to say that a hairband made out of these little granny squares with this crochet thread would look so delicate and so pretty for the upcoming warm months. This is um, just shy of an inch and a half across. It is three and a half centimeters. So a two row granny using that hook and that thread is three and a half centimeters across. So lovely and small, what a delicate little thing. Now, if you wanna make a granny square that's nice and big, Tori, if you're just, I wanna make a doily. Okay, well, keep going. Make that granny square as many rows as you want. Make it as big as you like. Um, I'll add a third row to this granny square just so it's a little more visible. And then we're going to put like a, a just a simple little border on it. And this would work no matter how big your granny square gets. Um, the, the border you choose, if it works on a shell stitch or a multiple of three stitch kind of pattern, it'll work no matter how many rows you put on your granny square. So I'm just going to go to three rows here just to make it a little, just a little bigger and a little easier to see. Shell, chain two, shell, chain one to leave the corner. Three double crochet or one shell in the chain one space. Chain one before you leave. And then into the next corner. Shell, chain two, shell, chain one. And in our first tutorial that we do, I say that so much that you'll hear it in your sleep if you pay attention. <laughs> I also find when I'm working with crochet thread, I don't know if any of you find this too, um, that it really wants to twist on me. Like the actual thread itself wants to twist. Do you find that? Is that just me? Maybe it's the way I feed my thread. You see it wanting to sort of twist up on me here. I think I like this stitch size. I think I like this hook to yarn weight ratio. This feels like a nice quasi drapey tension. Um, like if I was making a doily for real, I feel like this would be a nice stitch tension. But, you know, that could just be the way my personal tension operates with this hook and this thread. So that's why I always say it's great to do um, a little sampler because we're all different. All right, there's three rows of that little granny square 
Gosh, that's cute. Let's just pull out my little corners. Doo -doo. Very, very small. So there's my little granny square. Um, I am going to put a scallop border on it because I think I like the way that looks. Um, I love how scallops just sort of finish off the top of a granny shell, just a mini little scallop. So this is what I mean by that. I mean, just a sip of my water here. No, Abigail, I've never made a full tablecloth. That would take a long time and I don't have the patience for it yet. <laughs> I've often said once uh, once I'm really old and I really can't get out of my chair much, then I might, that'll be the time I sit and make a tablecloth. Uh, it's a very concern for your hands. You don't want you to overdo it and uh, damage your, uh, your joints. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I think um, so far I'm okay. That was, I'm using... These clover hooks, these are the clover amour hooks. We did a um, a review on these hooks like five years ago now. How long ago was that, sweetie? Um, it, at least five. Yeah. At, at least five years ago. Um, these are the hooks you see me use all the darn time here. And I've tried other hooks. Um, I even got some super expensive tulips. And I love clover amour. Not sponsored. No one has ever sent me hooks to try out. We spend our own money on hooks and Clover Amour are my absolute favorite. Now, I'm a knife grip. I'm not a pencil grip. My mother-in-law is a pencil grip and I gave her the tulips and she absolutely adores them. She feels it really works out well for her grip, but I'm a knife grip and these are my favorite hooks and they are so comfortable that they they were a game changer for me. When I, I used to use the regular steel uh, shaft hooks like the Suzanne Bates and the Boy. And they're great. I still love those hooks. I love my bamboo hooks. Um, but once uh, my rheumatoid presented itself um, and my grip changed, my ability to crochet for long periods of time changed, we got these ergonomic hooks, just tried them out. We saw the both the sets, um, the larger set and smaller set were for sale on Amazon years ago. And we bought them. And I've really never gone back to using the other hooks. They're just they are so comfortable. They just make so, all the difference for me. It might be six years. Cameron, Cameron um, recognized that we got them during the Victorian Stitch Lick sampler, which would have been 2017. So six years ago. Six years ago. Okay, thanks, Cammy. Wow. Good Lord, that's a long time ago. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, so... These hooks um, make it so that I can use thread now, and I absolutely love thread. I love thread, um, but you know, thread being able to feed it is the other half of crochet. So it's not just holding the hook; it's being able to feed it. And I'm more comfortable sort of threading stuff between these two fingers. And this can get a little fatigued after a while. Um, so I don't use a lot of crochet thread. Um, I don't use thread in projects very much, but I do love it and. Yes, eventually I would like to make a tablecloth, but this is fun today, trying out the granny square with the thread and the smaller hook. I've done this before um, for other little projects, but it was fun to be able to do it with you guys live. And now we're going to put that little um, scallop edge on it. This is just a fun thing. So I'm just going to slip stitch into the corner because I want to start in the corner. And... All right, I'm going to start in the corner. I'm going to ignore the corner for now. I'm going to focus my attention on the shells and the spaces in between. So each shell is three double crochet. I'm looking at the middle stitch and I'm looking at the space in between. Into that middle stitch, I'm going to work uh, three half double crochets to start. Let's see how big this is. Scallops can change. Eh, we're going to make it five. Five half double crochets. That's a nice size. Five half double crochet into that middle shell stitch and then slip stitch into the space in between. <clears throat> Excuse me. Find the middle stitch of the shell and work five half double crochets into it. And once I get this side done, I'll just show you what it looks like. What is that? One, two, three, four, one more. And then slip stitch into the space. Um, Beans, Beans Bug says, Miss Stitches, it would be cool if you make a poll. Pencil 
pencil grip or knife grip. That's a great idea. Yes, great idea. Who said that? Beans? Uh, Beans, one of our channel members. Beans Bug, that's the cutest name. Yes, Mr. Stitch is going to do a poll. Great question, everybody. Please answer Mr. and Stitch's poll. Are you a knife grip or a pencil grip? And he'll get that poll up and running in a second. When I get to the corner, I'm going to do seven to nine. Um, actually, I beg your pardon. That's going to be a slip stitch. So let me just do another into that middle stitch of the shell. Also, if you're working on a, a border for a granny square blanket, this is a fun thing to do. Make up a granny square and then experiment with different borders that you like around it. One, two, three, four. I think I need another one there. So that's five. I'm going to slip stitch into the corner. I'm ignoring the corner and then I'm working, continuing to work five half double crochets into the middle stitch of each of those shells across the side. And this turns into the cutest little slip stitch in between. You see that little, it's like it, oh, it's just so cute. Look how it transforms the look of a granny square. All of a sudden, you've got a little scalloped edge, and it's starting to look a bit like a doily. Um, Diane... Diane asked, had a question, but I can't see it in the chat. So can you ask her to repeat it? Diane had a question, but we can't find it in the chat. Can you please repeat your question, Diane? Mr. Stitcher said he saw it zip by, but he can't see it. Oh, my gosh. That's so cute. That's good. Now I have to see how the whole thing looks, so I'm going to go all the way around. Remind everyone, take part in the chat uh, the, the poll is sitting at the top of the chat. Okay, Mr. and Stitches has got the poll up and running. If you're a knife grip or a pencil grip, please vote on the one you are. We should uh, get a nice idea of the cross section. What is everybody? So far. Great. Oh, look how that, that is so cute. <laughs> oh. Rosie would like to see it closer. Okay, let me just finish Rosie and I'll hold it up nice and close for you. I'm almost done here. I'm on the home stretch. Two more little scallops to go. Claire would like to see the two different grips. Yes, I will show you the two different grips. Let me just finish this. So I'm using the knife grip. As you can see, I'm holding my crochet hook like I would hold a knife to, you know, cut your food or something. Um, almost done here. I don't know if Diane S is still in the chat, but it, I, I'm wondering if her um, her uh, messages aren't coming through. So just let her know. Sure, I'm I. Uh, not seeing any questions or any any. Uh, yeah, uh, Diane, I don't know if you're still there, but we didn't see your question. We only saw your request to see the question, and I still don't see a question. So I don't know if it's not coming through, but I don't see anything from Diane. So um, if you're still there, please try asking your question in the live chat again. And if not, just leave it in the comment section down below and I can get to it a little later. All right, everybody, there it is. I'm going to hold it up there on the back of my uh, hand. A little, a little more to the north. There we go. Oh, yeah. Hold that there for a sec. 
Let us absorb the beauty. What a what a frilly looking little granny square. Is that not the cutest thing? So that's crochet thread. It, it does look like a cookie. Anne is right. It looks like a cookie. <laughs> um, so, uh, Tori, if you wanted to sort of experiment with thread and a hook um, to make some doilies, I'm going to say that um, this a little larger. So maybe, hmm, let me just do a quick little measurement. The three rows is about four, four and a half centimeters, four centimeters. With the little extra on, we're looking at about six centimeters. A regular coaster. So let me see here. I have a coaster right here. This is a good coaster size. That's about half. So if we run, that may be five. One, 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 two, three, four, maybe four. Once again. One, two, three, one, two, three, so maybe four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven rows of the regular granny square with the scallop stitch around the edge would be a good coaster size using size one crochet thread and a 2.25 millimeter or a B. That is my prediction based on measuring this um, and that being a regular size sort of coaster. Um, I think that would make an absolutely a delightful set of coasters. And it's just the granny square, the humble bumble granny square. I love it. Oh, Diane, I see you. When doing a granny square blanket in the square, what is the best way to do each round? I don't think I fully understand that question. When doing the granny square blanket in the square, what is the best way to do each round? What is the best way to do each round? Uh, I don't, I don't really, I'm sorry. I don't really understand that. Um, if you mean like how many, I I don't think I understand. <laughs> we'll yeah, okay, so let me just quickly go through. Um, it depends, if you're gonna make a granny square blanket, i.e. this one, and you don't know how to, like, like um, you can use any granny square pattern you like. So if you wanna reverse rows, like go one way direction than the other, every row, you can do that makes a beautiful square. If you always want to go in the same direction like I've done today, that's fine. When makes a beautiful square. When you get to the end of each row. What, like slip stitch to join? Oh, okay. Well, um, in my personal opinion, I like to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that started the row. Then I like to slip stitch into across the next two stitches into the corner and start in the corner. I love to start every single row in a corner. Um, if you're going to turn at the end of every row, you don't have to do that. You just start in the, the space that you'll be right, right in front of if you're turning at the end of every row. But that's going to make like every other row, your stitches will be facing up and then back, like uh, forwards and then backwards, forwards and backwards. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how I used to make all my granny squares. And that's also a nice design choice. Um, but I just like always going in the same direction because I like all of my stitches to face up as opposed to some facing up and some facing down. So I join every, every row should be joined. You have to, you can't just work in the round because that will cause like a weird sort of bend because you're using the double crochet stitch. So you end up with like, it just won't work out. So you join every row with a slip stitch. And then I recommend slip stitching across and into the corner space. Um, our solid color granny square tutorial demonstrates that very clearly, in my opinion, that is the most comfortable way to make a granny square right now. But like I said, you can you can make them any way you want. Most importantly, um, if you're making them for a blanket, you want to make them in a way that is comfortable and quick because you want to be efficient. Uh, blankets are big projects and you don't want to be making granny squares for years and years and years because you're, you know, you're doing something slow or monotonous. So make the granny square the comfortable, efficient way that you like. And that's the right way. Um, yeah. I am linking that tutorial for Diane. Great. Oh, and also shout out to Nico for another membership. Oh my gosh, Nico, thank you so much. Nico has just gifted another membership. 
Um, okay, let's see. A little recap of what we've been at to today. This is yeah, polls coming in. Mr. and Sister just finished the poll. Look at all these grannies that I made today. Oh my gosh. How fun. All the same thing, and yet they look completely different. So let's see here. Poll, are you a knife grip? 70%, pencil grip, 25%, other four <laughs> percent. That's awesome. This is the knife grip. You hold it like you're holding a knife, you know, like you'd be cutting your food. This is the pencil grip. You're holding it like you would write with a pencil. Um, I know that there are other ways to hold the hook. The pencil and the knife grip are the most the most uh, common, I would say. But I mean, some people, um, depending on, you know, how you need to hold the hook, uh, how, how you use your thumb and your forefingers, um, it's entirely up to you. There is no right way to hold your crochet hook. There is no right way to feed your yarn. What you're looking for is an even tension and to form a stitch in a way that looks correct or that won't unravel on you. So, you know, um, if you've ever come across people saying, oh, well, there's, you know, this is the correct way to hold your yarn or this is the correct way to hold your hook, that worked for them. Maybe that's the way they were taught, but it isn't necessarily the way that's going to work for you. Um, so experiment with different ways to hold your hook. If you wind up with some sort of degenerative nerve disease or or like an immune system issue like I've got, and you literally can't hold your hook the way you used to, that may facilitate you learning a new way to hold your hook. Well, that now becomes the right way for you to hold your hook. So whatever works for you is right. And uh, don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. We have a continuation of Diane's question. Sure. You do not have to turn at the end of any row, uh, but you can, Diane. If you, if you, there are so many ways to make a granny square. There is no correct way. So if you want, like, you know, the first row stitches facing up, and then the next row stitches facing down, you turn at the end of every row, and you can do that. That's not wrong. It's not going to come apart. It's going to be fine. You still join every row with a slip stitch and chain three to start um, the next row. It just depends on where you're chaining three. So if you're turning at the end of every row. You just chain three from where you are. You don't have to slip stitch across to a space um, because like if you finish a row right here and then you turn your work, well, now this is the space that's right next to you. So you just chain three from where you are and you work into that space. But now you're not creating a corner to start every row, which is why I like to slip stitch across the corner, chain three, work the corner and keep going always in the same direction. I like to do that. Um, but that's not the way I started making grannies. I, I changed the end of every row because that's the way I was taught. Um, it wasn't until many years later when I was fiddling with different granny square patterns and fiddling with the way I liked granny squares to look that I decided that I could just keep going and around and around and around. So that's the way I like to do them now. Um, but there is no right way. So you can do whatever you like. You can turn at the end of every row. You can just slip stitch across the corner and start in the corner and always, always be going in the same direction like me. It's entirely up to you. Um, there is no right way. It comes down to what you like the look of. So if you've ever made a granny square by changing directions every row, make one. Make another one the same size going in the same direction like I do. Make one without the extra chain in between if you want to try that. Make one with, say, three chains in the corner if you want larger corner spaces. There are so many ways you can vary up a granny square. And once again, there is no right way to make a granny square. The right way to make a granny square is so that it doesn't unravel. <laughs> um, if your granny squares unravel from the center, it's just because there's always like, it could be that you made a circle in a, a ring that wants to unravel. Maybe your your um, found like your um, slip knot came apart. It shouldn't leave a long enough tail that you can weave it in or work over top of it. And it shouldn't want to come undone. But if it does, it's very likely it's because there's been so much pressure and 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 torque and tension on the center of that square that the, the stitches in between may have snapped, especially if you're using yarn that is old or it's been washed a lot of times and it's a little bit maybe delicate. Um, these stitches may have snapped, in which case the whole thing's going to unravel on you. Not a big deal tie off the yarn, stop it from unraveling. And then if you need to hold in that circle, just grab some yarn that's a similar colors you can make it. Grab your yarn needle. Where's my yarn needle? There you are. 
grab your yarn needle and the length of yarn and then literally just weave that yarn through all of those stitches. So through that, you know, that shell and through the next shell and through the next shell, you're weaving in that yarn, you leave a little tail out, get through all four of them. Take those two tails, tie them together, and that will whoop, cinch your circle back into a circle, weave those tails in, and it's like nothing ever fell apart. So that's a good way to stop a granny square from unraveling from the center out, because sometimes they want to do that. Sure, let's have the questions. Um, Chad moves on me, I get lost. Mr. Stitches is looking so, for questions. Um, can you explain turning the corner on the square? Turning the corner on the square, yes. Um, so this is a good one to work in. There's your corner. Squares have four corners. Squares will always have four corners. That will never ever change. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a square. So if you have trouble identifying your four corners, mark them off with stitch markers. That way you know that that is the corner and that's where you do your corner work. The magic of the 90 degree angle, this little thing right here, is created by chains. So you work a shell, three double crochet. I like two chains because I find that just kind of goes weep, weep, like to the corner and down to the next side. Then you work your other three double crochet, your other shell, and that's all into the same space, the same corner space from the row before. And that turns your corner. When you're learning how to make granny squares, I say the magic always happens when you turn the second corner of the second row. Because all of a sudden, that's when you can really see it. When that first row you do in a granny square often looks very circular, which is why I always say, yeah, put it down, find those four corners, pull it out. It's that second corner of the second row, when you turn that second corner, I, I love it. I, whenever I'm teaching someone in person, I always see that light click on and they go, oh, and they see it because there's that, that direct corner and it's much more prominent in the second row than it is in the first row. Um, that's why it's good to put your, your, your square down at the end of every row, find those four corners and just pull them out because it helps you shape that, that little <laughs> floppy yarn creation into a square as you go. Um, it's like blocking as you work. I recommend it. And that's turning the corner, those two chains. Now, I've seen granny squares where there's only one chain in the corner, and that's fine. You might have to work a little harder to kind of pinch that corner into a cornery shape. I also know some people use three chains in the corner, and that's just, you know, depending on the size of the yarn, the hook you're using, your tension, maybe you need three chains. But the actual corner is created by working the shell the corner chains and the shell all into the same corner of the row before. And that just basically has you crochet up, make a right turn or a right angle turn and keep going in the other direction. Uh, question from Kathy. I have recently seen someone joining the rows of granny squares with a half double crochet. Can you please take a bit, to, can you please talk about this a bit? Somebody joins rows in a granny square with a half double crochet. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I've seen that. It's like um, instead of instead of chaining to get to the to the next, like instead of chaining one and then joining with a slip stitch, they aren't chaining. They're finishing their last double crochet and then they're working a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain. Um, it's fine, I guess. I mean, there's like I say, there's no way to there's no right way to do that. That just might be their way of creating the chain slip stitch as opposed to so instead of making chain one slip stitch to join the row, they're half double crocheting into the top of that chain three, or maybe it was a standing double crochet. It depends on how they started their row. They're joining with the half double crochet, which basically instead of making the half double crochet sit vertically, it sits perpendicular. So it sits horizontally. Um, I don't know. It's just a design choice. Maybe some people find that faster. Maybe they like the way it propels them into the second row. Because I like to continue to slip stitch across and into the corner, I find the slip stitching method works for me for the specific granny square design that I'm using. But um, my gosh, experiment, 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 experiment. I can't say it enough. Granny squares are there for you to experiment with. Spiral that flipping fixes in the larger continuous granny square. 
Good question, Summer. Slip stitching into the corner does not stop your granny square from giving getting a slight lean the larger it gets. So um, slip stitching into the corner just allows you to start your chain three in a space uh, without flipping your work. If you want to stop the lean that happens, you flip every row. And that's really good if you're making really massive granny squares. Um, the biggest granny squares I've made using this method are 16 inches. They are um, a king size afghan that, to be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure where it's hiding at the moment, but I've shown it before. It's a huge blanket. It's all like greens and white. Those squares were 16 inches and they still didn't have a pronounced lean, but that might be because I have a very um, easygoing tension. I was using a very large hook with that yarn. So tension will also play into that lean. But if you go, if you flip it every single row, so you go this way, this row, and then turn it, and then this way, this row, and then turn it, you will not get that lean happening. That does fix the lean. But um, slip stitching into the corner with tighter tension will create a little bit of lean. But I mean, that's after quite a while. Like you have to get to like a baby blanket sized granny square before that lean becomes very pronounced. Um, but even then you can block the blanket and that'll help remove that, that spin or that spiraling lean that it gets. Good question. One last question. Sure. Uh, why three double crochets per space? So a shell is just a kind of a classic stitch motif. Three double crochets equals a shell. Why? It's comfortable. Um, it's a good sized number of stitches to stick in one space. It doesn't make it too wide. It doesn't make it too skinny. Um, and there's something about threes. Threes is just a, a good number. Now I have seen granny squares. You can make a granny square that's just solid double crochet. So there's no shells, but the shell stitch, the granny shell stitch, this classic three double crochet in the same stitch or space, that shell stitch, it's just one of the oldest combinations in crochet. Um, Queen Victoria herself liked to crochet. She actually helped make it a very popular hobby because she enjoyed doing it. And she would make scarves, mostly for soldiers, and she would use the granny shell stitch. So her granny shell stitch scarves, you know what? I'll just start one just so you can see what we're talking about here. Let's grab some yarn. This is an encore. I'm going to grab this yarn. I'm going to grab a big hook. Shout out to Wendy. Shout out to Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Um, here's a nod to Queen Victoria. So if you're watching Queen Victoria <laughs> from somewhere beyond, this is, this is the shell stitch scarf that Queen Victoria made all the time. The shell stitch is a multiple of three. And I like uh, a, a, a single double crochet on either end. So we're going to go with a multiple of three chains uh, for the bottom. This is just a little sampler. So let's say there's a multiple of three chains. Now we need a, a chain on either end for our two double crochet pillars or posts. So that's two more chains and then I'm going to use three chains as a turning. So I'm going to chain two. I'm going to count this chain that my thumb is on as the third chain. I'm going to skip two. So I'm going to double crochet into the sixth chain from the hook. And this is where I'm going to start my first shell stitch. So three double crochet equals one shell. This is the straight shell stitch. Works back and forth. You don't have to work chains in between. You can if you want, but you don't have to. Every you skip two chains, you work a shell into the third chain. We do have a tutorial on this. Um, and in that tutorial, we discuss the formula you can use and how, I mean, you can just, my gosh, you can make a blanket using this. I have, you can make shell scarves using this. So let me just work my first row here. What I'm doing is I'm working three double crochet into every third chain. So I skip two chains, I work three double crochet into the third chain. Here's 
is just something about the shell stitch. And if I've done this right, I should have two chains left to skip. Oh, looks like I messed up. One, two, three. Ah, whatever. I'm cheating. Double crochet into the last chain. And this is the shell stitch all the way across. I probably should have skipped into the seventh chain. Doesn't matter. Um, you can also cheat quite a bit in crochet. <laughs> That's another reason I like it. <laughs> oh, somebody just... Nico, thank you for gifting another membership. And Miriam won it. Wonderful. Woo thank you. Uh, at the end of the row, you chain three. That becomes your new post. And um, you can work two double crochets into that first space. And then three double crochet into each space all the way across. There are many ways to work this stitch. But I'm just going to get a couple rows in and I'll show you what it looks like. And it's just the oldest combination. It's a simple combination. It's a pleasing combination. It's an easy way to do the math. You can really play with it. Um, there's, once again, no right or wrong way to use this stitch. If you want um, larger spaces, you just chain one in between shells if you want. I have a question from Kelly. Sure. Kelly asks, would you ever consider making a granny hexagon cardigan or book cover tutorial? Granny hexagon cover, book cover, or uh, cardigan, cardigan tutorial? Or book no, I don't think we have a book cover. The Granny Hexagon, um, we we actually have a little mini Granny Hexagon sweater tutorial. It's for our little mini Granny sweater, our little mini Christmas ornament sweater. It's a little mini sweater to hang on the Christmas tree. Um, anyway, you can you can sorry, just to, I'll finish that thought in a second. This is the shell stitch. You can work the shells in between the shells from the previous row, like you would a Granny square, or you can work the shells into the tops or the middles of each shell all the way across. So you always have um, this. You always have a chain three to begin. That's your post. And then you work the shells directly on top of each other, always working them into the middle stitch of the previous shell. And I'll show you how that differs. This is sort of stacked shell. I love both. I kind of like both the looks. I'll get a few in here. Um, the Granny Hexagon sweater is, I think the first time I saw that, who, who was the first person I saw to do that? It was like 20 years ago on the internet was the first one I saw. It was a baby sweater version using the Granny Hexagons. Um, look at how neat that is. Those are stacked shells. So they sit directly on top of each other and the spaces line up and the shells line up. It's very nice. You can do a lot with the shell stitch. Um, the hexagon is, it's, you know what? It's super easy. You almost don't even, if you know how to make the granny hexagon, we have a granny hexagon tutorial. You basically make it big enough so that you can drape it over your arm and it's, and one half of it folded over your arm is the length you want. And then you make the other one identical. You, and you fold them in half and you stitch up one side and across the other. So one, one seam is your arm and the other seam is the middle back. All you have to do is look at our um, hexagon mini ornament sweater ornament tutorial to kind of see those two seams and how they they fold on, and uh, line up and get stitched together. And then you can make that for babies, toddlers, teenagers, you, you know, a giant. <laughs> you just basically make the hexagon as big as you need to. Um, and then you make two identical and stitch them together. It is like the simplest a uh, way to make a cardigan. And it's so cool that a, that a hexagon folds like that into a sleeve and the front and back of a sweater. It's it's kind of genius. I just love it. Um, but uh, on the subject of a hexagon, what border would you recommend, says Denise? Um, if you're using a granny hexagon pattern, you can do the same thing. You can use single crochet, half, double, trebles, depending on what look you want. You can use more of the shell stitch. You can use that scalloped edge again. Um, if you want to like fill in the, like, you know how sometimes if you put them together in rows, you'll get like that little half hexagon shape inside. You can fill that in with half hexagons if you want, or you could just kind of like work all the corners. I've made some hexagon blankets where I just worked outside corners and inside corners. I think we talked about that in our hexagon, our granny hexagon tutorial. That's an old tutorial. That one's golly gee, that one's going back to 2015, I think. But I think I talked about that 
in that tutorial because it does create kind of an interesting edging. It looks almost like the top of a castle turret, you know, I love that sort of shape or the edge of a, um, a stamp, an old postage stamp. Yes, Adele, somebody made made a version of the hexagon sweater a while ago and called it the campfire sweater. But the hexagon, just to be clear, the hexagon, the granny hexagon, two hexagons bent into a sweater is as old as the hills. <laughs> so, you know, people can call it whatever they want. They can call it a shrug. They can call it a campfire sweater. They can call it the hexagon baby sweater. They can call it whatever they want. But bending two granny hexagons into a sweater is is old, old, old. It's as old as the granny hexagon itself. Um, like I said, the first time I came across it, it was in a baby sweater version of the pattern um, from a mathematician who also crocheted years and years ago, 20, 20 plus years ago on the internet. It was one of the first one of the first crochet patterns I found on the internet. That's before video on the internet. So we are going way, way back. And I wish I could remember her name. Um, but it wasn't even her. It was somebody commenting on her who had done it. And my grandmother, I mentioned it to my grandmother at the time and she went, oh, heavens, my mom made those years ago. So it's an old concept um, to turn two hexagons into. And But I mean, it's it's so cool. You can have so much fun by alternating colors, by changing up the yarn, by changing up, you know, whether you make it a shell stitch hexagon or a solid double crochet hexagon. Uh, it just makes a hexagon shape as big as you need and fold them in half, stitch two together, and you've got a sweater. It is just, it is so fun. We will probably do one, but I think that might be kind of a fun project to work on during a live stream since it's kind of like a mindless bit of work. You know, um, you're just working a hexagon for row after row after row after row. Um, Yep. Yeah, we have a paper version of our Granny Square game in our Etsy shop. So you can print the pattern. It has uh, even instructions on how to make the little spinner and stuff in it. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for like a paper version of the Granny Square game, we have that in our Etsy shop. We also have it in our Teespring shop, I think. Oh, is it in our Teespring shop too? I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. The, I don't think we've got the shelf working, but I know the link to the Teespring shop is in the description box. Yes. Um, it's called Spring now, I think. Um, anyway, it's spring. it's spring. Yeah, it's spring. Now they changed the name of it a little while ago. Everybody, if you have any more questions, please uh, let us know. We'll grab a couple more questions and then we'll wrap it up for today. Let me just pull in my Hello, squares here. Kathy, Kathy, uh... Kathy, I'm still new to these squares. Today's was so helpful. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Kathy. We, we are going to, you know what? We will create a, a post a little later after the live stream that highlights our best beginner granny square tutorials. So if you want to check out those links, um, get a feel for, you know, the different ways to make a granny square, um, then we'll put those, we'll put together a post for you guys later on today. And then you can check that out, especially if you're still new to like figuring out grannies. I'll also make sure we include that link to the video on figuring out how big to make your squares, um, how many squares you would need for a blanket, and so on. I'm really, I'm in love with this little lacy one. I'm thinking I might stitch this onto my jeans. Diane really needs your help. Diane needs my help. What's up for Diane? Data, please help. I'm using ombre cover joints to be a big granny square blanket. Thank you. 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 What's the problem? <laughs> I don't know, Diane. Um, that sounds pretty. <laughs> um, ombre, ombre is if you're it, ombre is kind of like a self-striping yarn. So if you're using an one unending uh, yarn to make your granny squares, and it's ombre or self-striping. Um, it'll go, it's going to make your granny squares look gradually change color, right? That'll look really pretty. Um, I don't know what the trouble is with it, but if, if it's because you can't find the end of your row, always, whenever you start your rows, like you chain three, just mark it with a stitch marker. And then when you get back to it, it's very easy to see. Sometimes it's hard to see the beginning and ends of rows. If you're using like a funny texture yarn, or if you're using a yarn that maybe changes color a lot like this stuff, you know, um, it's helpful to mark out the beginning of your row or your four corners if you have trouble spotting your corners. Um, I hope that helps. I don't really know what the problem with the ombre yarn is, but uh, it's going to be a pretty square, a pretty blanket. 
Any tips for tackling all the ends? Asks Catherine. Ends, yes. Um, I know it's annoying, but you weave them in. So uh, you pull them down. This is what I do. When you're working with double crochet, where's my knitting or my little hook? How'd that go? Where is my... How could I possibly lose it? Where is my yarn needle? Yarn needle, whoa. Where'd you go? Wow. Where'd my yarn needle go? Ah, there it is. All right. I'll show you on this one. <clears throat> um, I like to bring it down the back loop of the closest double crochet. So halfway down that double crochet, I grab a loop, pull it through that loop, and then I just weave it in back and forth underneath the corner stitches. And yep. It's annoying, there's a lot of ends, but it looks much neater if you weave them all in. Um, I give it a little tug and make sure I haven't pulled anything out of alignment. That looks good. And then I pop over a loop and just weave it back the way I came. Do that a couple times. If it's really like, if it's loose like this one, I'd weave it in back and forth and back and forth until it completely runs out. If it's tight like this one, one way, all the way one way, and then all the way back, and that's probably enough for me, unless it's slippery yarn, in which case I'd weave the whole tail in, but then I'll just trim it. And uh, I know it's annoying, but you got to weave in those tails. All right, we will wrap it up with Diane's final question. <laughs> okay. Diane says, I am doing one big granny square blanket, round and round. How is the best way? To oh, do you're making one big granny square blanket, round and around and around. How is the best way to do it? Um, I don't know. It depends on you, Diane. If, uh, like Summer was saying, sometimes you might get a little bit of a lean going if you're always going in the same direction. Um, that can be corrected by blocking it out, or um, if you're, you know, if your tension kind of if you can control your tension, you maybe you need it to be a little tighter sometimes, a little looser sometimes. If you don't want any lean whatsoever, then turning directions at the end of every row, um, that will stop it from leaning. But the lean isn't necessarily super pronounced or even aesthetically unpleasing. So it it doesn't ultimately matter um, how you do it. So if you like changing directions every row, then you won't have to worry about any lean whatsoever um, if that's something you're concerned about. Otherwise, you can just keep going around and around and around. I taught a friend how to make a granny square, and the first thing she made was a baby blanket, just going row after row after row. And it had just the little, a little bit of a lean to it. Like the corners kind of looked like they were kind of dancing. She actually liked the way it looked. Um, but then once she washed it, it kind of squared itself out. So um, you may or may not get that lean. It depends. And you may or may not like it um, because, and also the bigger it gets, the less likely you are to see it because you have to kind of see the whole square laying flat before you can see that little bit of a lean. If you've got it draped over a bed, you probably won't see it. Catherine says, thanks for all the tips and tricks you always give. Aw, thank you guys. Thank you for hanging out today. I hope you found this, if not useful, at least kind of entertaining. Um, I'm kind of in love with this. I'm going to weave in my little tail and I'm thinking I might stitch it onto my jeans because this is cotton and I just think that would be the cutest little applique on the back pocket of my jeans. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to share it on the community tab later today and you can all decide if you like it. I think this is so cute. I'm like in love with it. I also just love this beige color. I don't know why. It's like so rustic or I don't know, like plain. Anyway, that's the plan for this afternoon. Thank you all for hanging out. And uh, I hope the rest of your Sunday is lovely, lovely and calm and peaceful and full of our favorite hobby, a little bit of crafting, a little bit of snacking. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.